Dude, you just don't have to do it. The universal cell phone. That's like a madness. Make time. This is a. Uh, I thought I'd just read some of the letters. Oh, right, sorry. Testing, is that, <laughs> testing, is that good? That's good. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> uh, letter from Hammertown to East Vancouver in the East Village. Dear Kay, I am planning ahead for the first time. For soon it will be spring, and then it will be the grid of appearance upon which spring can be laid. That is what is from the ground up becoming will be from the ether managed. The lawns will fade to unfenced ochre, back onto alleys roughly narrow paved, the width of an Austin from the administration of Macmillan. The poignant sheds will sprawl and lean another season for no reason. But all of this, though hardly molecular, if squinted at through eyes oracular, betrays conclusions scarcely singular. The scale is still a cap full of cabbage resting on a bag of flesh pulled along by a little red wagon. What eventually emerges from dirty, stubby fingers, toes, beggars description, but is no secret either. A deer trail, then a dog trail, then Pete's trail, then my trail. Sherpa Tensing sits puffing on the roof of the world. His belief in process absorbed by the throbbing worm that mutters and sweats at the mucky heart of being. Thus engaged, rhetoric becomes prosthesis, staggers down the parade route of a strange city within a giant face of plaster. But speak, it does not. Another grotesquerie affirming the shapeliness of all things. Likewise, the saturate flowers, the seepage suspect, the coffee grounds idling in the tray. Such that progressive collapse seems itself a tender unfolding, a rose within a Bible drying, a whiff of distant evening cooking. The winter twilight's pall of wood smoke drifts and softens even as it sears and conceals. Just as the low millennial fog of Hammertown cloaks the shuttered factories, dog-ridden lots, and oil-dappled pavements in the wispy raiments of authenticity. I stirred the pond water with a little stick, watched duckweed swirl as though beneath February's late ice while through the bright fractal enclosures of the alder grove flickers flicked, tohees wheeled, tanagers managed. I'm lining things up all in a little row so that the real image of spring and the mental image of spring can be made to somehow agree. The new incorporated self erects a kind of recording scrim on which the successive domed apprehensions of the April sky, the broiling surface tension of Dodd Narrows, etc., can be decelerated and examined. A field guide to the fields, a boy's book of burls, the unexamined yard, firm monochrome attribution, dull days in the eastern capitals, the index, the big one. These wet streets, your hands plunged into the warm dirt, the exhaust fans of the endless orange tunnel that lies between us, what of them? I try to think of you and can bring to mind only the great parabolic bridges in whose shadow you live, fist-sized rivets of red iron buoying above the molten stream of thought into which each day you are thrown. As the day grows clear and cold, the mind grows hazy. The wind indicating woodpecker hesitates and reverses, 
The earth, like a little boat on a calm day, pitches and rolls, a metal stylus on a resonating film of charged oil. A letter from Hammertown a few years later. Later. Only the densest, dentist insect overtones dare drop into the valley from the Sunday construction so impatiently at ten begun above, though the rate of such things varies more than you'd think. Some build as if session men called out by the union to short time of the undergrowth for the Xbox simulation of the birth of Skiffle. Others, as if flown on Blackhawks to build an interrogation center five days ahead of the army. Outward facing polished tin walls to conduct heat, spirit animals laminated into every post for low grade hallucinations when the Red Bull and castor oil kick in. Others as if alders were closing in with a green man's leering face and that aggregate should be poured down his throat right now. <laughs> Over in townsite, evolved sparrows turn into lawn ornaments at will and the sleepy subsonic rumble of Chase River through the park is unbroken either by the snap of skateboard Veronica's or the dream speech of dog barks. And east of that, the kingdom of the cranes and spiders occupies the arena where Fats Domino once stood, where the roll of the second line and the two-four of the bass drum echoed from the foundry across Newcastle Channel. Dog eulogistics. First of two dog poems. Uh, with both have quotes from William Empson's uh, essay, The English Dog. Few people nowadays observe their dogs to grin, and those who do take it as a charming smile. But the grin of dogs seems then to have been a part of their reputation for satire. <laughs> <laughs> Never met a detour it didn't like, or that didn't have a joke at the end of it. Rara Avis strode the rare earth, born to wonder and born to wander. Why trees refuse pants and cats umbrellas? Why the slave that made my t-shirt, the slave that made my donkey chow, and the slave that melted my Swiss just now don't just walk barking over the bodies of their symptoms and out the door. Like when it turned out the witch's kryptonite was water, eh? The clever flying monkeys thought description sufficient and didn't even have a plan A. Thus found themselves a plant mister away from domination by the cowardly class. Still better under house arrest in a postal facilities than dressed in brocade and carried in a cup. <laughs> Craft dinner with privileges, this, um, William Empson. It is the pastoral idea that there is a complete copy of the human world among dogs, as among swains or clowns. <laughs> this is my Vancouver history poem. <laughs> At last the anger ascends, like the forking branches of a big tattoo, or the lockside fleet's rampant cross of gold, shimmering now with revolutionary impatience. As at the hot club, Paul Pot slides his capo two notches up the ukulele's neck <laughs> after shaking up the crumbs. Lennon dries his kazoo on the radiator. Those of us who confuse improvisation with such overpreparedness will never understand the role that menthols played in the downfall of the Romanovs. <laughs> the scrabble hustlers of Zurich played through the pain, and every croak they buttered, grilled, and quarters for the class ring and cider set was a bucket of thick sand dredged from the harbor mouth of history. On tiny tampera couches they slept, pillows stuffed with discarded beards, rode in sealed containers down the chuckanut, till six days later a burning rag is shoved through a bookstore mail slot. 
At last the anger ascends. The chicken cook is tried in absentia, his instruments scattered to the flames while at Joe's the shining paths smirk through Americanos, as though at the clack of the pool balls, while rocket on the jukebox, the hiss of the Victoria bus, a dog's jaws closing on a frisbee, bandana flapping, proclaim victory, victory, victory. <laughs> Five more Vancouver trees for Larry Bremner. A quote from Patrick Lee Fern. Here and there between the pages, a skeleton leaf conjured up those lost woods. I won't read the numbers. The phylogeny of sleep versus the ontogeny of waking up. Bunny beard blankets, dew drop the sleeping sluts wool. Drool voices skitter from the back of a tent. Circus. Useless user fingers pinch filched bodega grapes. Awaken sheets so soft you devour them in a dream. Goose feathers knuckle a wet November no hitters, bloody stucco. Horseradish breezes curl brown paint from gray lumber in soft curls. An August half moon teething at sixes and sevens. In sheets so soft they squeeze. Phantom pain out of real pain. Excuses thumbed, a map's wet fold. Ghost train fringe marked with misty rivers, chenille fingers, flutter gulches, cross digging legends out of anthracite. Shaded parks bunted for corner boys that flap and tumble and shamble. All is lock elsewhere. Arcadian pancake and parkade. Chewed venue through potash and slough. Eelgrass aftertaste past castle and ledge where the blue bus humps up and left past the twiggling figurines of a presumptive distance, even darker close in, thickened so with baronial fences and colonial hedges that only from overhead can the security corona be glimpsed when cat-like you trip its cricket senses. All is cantaloupe causeway, a shrubbery of near attainments, half-rendered blossoms, a spider's tincture grown over, monkey puzzle half-hardened with honey. Lichen overhangs the wavy, cavy air, dream flies sip hat salt and eye salt and sea salt in the inky truffle shade of a giant oak, Plotters tip cordials, toast lost illusions, lost dogs, lost wages. A bubble is a mighty fine thing. For about three months and change, the tulip was worth more than the pitcher of the two. And that tapioca backwash, wreathed in strawberry quick, was like childhood in reverse, open to the nourishment, but still popping the air's envelope, breakless on a banana cruiser. The state could not catch a fucking cold. <laughs> Too cheap to keep the flow of piping hot up, just ask the bus stations and movie theaters. No fresh towels for popcorn paws, and foam alone won't disinfect the coughed on loonies and toonies that insist into our minty mitts. Thus later asleep, drop in throat half lodged, eucalyptus. I missed it when Matrix dropped his crystal set into the toilet tank and so soap bombed the Italian fountain that the concrete fish crested foam all over downtown, scales glinting off the pebbles in the giant bowl of the casino's outdoor loser ashtray. Yeah. In sleep so thick, the panels of the trucks pivot through the birds and bricks that flap above the viaduct on downs as soft as poplar fluff, graders grade off moppy, mossy stuff, revealing projects never needed and zombie gardens never weeded. Ragged, council, ragged couches burning fleece prompts no visit from police. A hermaphroditic order in the standing water, a kind of turbid flux flaps above the viaduct.
This is a new one called Parkway Sadler in Memoriam, Jonathan Williams and Jerry Gilbert. The quotes are from the uh, assessment report for the uh, parkway that was built by the NDP in Nanaimo in uh, the 90s as a kind of gift for us being a loyal NDP riding and never getting any government projects for many decades. And they prepared this beautiful new urbanistic report. The rural parkway wooded is characterized as the cut through the forest quality created by the regularity of the forest edge and by the relative closeness of the forest to the roadway. However, where the opportunity to separate the bikeway exists, it should be seen to enter the forest, not just make the right of way wider. Scott's falls on Bruckner's fourth non-fog salvia's anecdote the antidote. Clarence Ben broke then rebroke the ice ends. Confectioners toffee holes patch the interior. Gravel spot welds bake the basket's granite into flakes of fondant iced with dust. Fornicating leaves of each five ones turned upward, the vestige of fielding road not accepted. Mathego wood, screech of harrier, screech of owl, permission to dig. Sump path empties into high river death splash, paint can pukes its last bridge tag. Landfill campers stumble, four steps from the fence, mouths full of pebbles, gullets full of debt. Enormously reduced by reverse mapping, muskeg description, pamphlets gutter. A newly formatted raven's tongue pops digitally out and in of trombone beak, Texas jug band style. But overhead, no news crawl, no bass lines from inland terraces or hoots from hominid heights. Off-road day trippers drop off Arbutus cloud tops, badger into a crevasse, Midwestern cushion full stop tree, bent under a towhee, the tread of a groundwater smeller rumbles through the cellar. Dig and tug where it's soft and not drained off. South from Alaska, a Rockford smog bomb digs its own tomb. Fills chewed up and gone over. Fills gone off. Fills gone fishy. A vacant lot, a mountainside to which you're tied. Parked at an angle, parked with struts, run up, runs through the ruts. A softball meteor readily sat, except it couldn't be brought back. Magnetism's a tip-off, so is the iron fillings of the rent a -cop. No used bookstore on the moon. No white grow tent puff. No Atlantis, no inflation where the pampas meets the rough. No use for the facetious paperback feces produced by our species. On fire when I bought it, I dropped it and fought it just like they taught it. The reasons why I mumble are numerous and far from simple. From truck to trestle, bare arm tickles, conjoined freckle. We talk handshake talk, hairwood muscular under the dome or pigeon walk home alone. Woolly bouvier wrists grasping cans of lucky or freezer burn slushies. The edges of this type of parkway are defined by the loose or feathered landscape edge, which may include rural fencing. In this type of parkway, visibility into developments is expected and therefore the controls focus on establishing a relatively consistent building setback, controlled signage, and mitigating the negative impact of loading areas and other unsightly elements of development. A farrier seat's too thin for the sort of work engaged in by a Jimmy wielding skeleton. And the crocuses would like to know if spring is here or will it go the way of Dr. Zhivago. <laughs> Garden shovels in a row, outside Rona, row on row, yellow, blue, green, yellow. Our reno hit a rock. Our reno hit the hard pan. Our reno hit the wall. A business card's too thick for all but thin-lipped heretics stirring their Kool-Aid with a stick. 
No need to get into a stew pot with a sacrificial horse. These days, of course, a streak of bovril hot from tartan thermos. The battle of the trees and the battle of the letters, and the battle between the letters and the trees and the rocks has got me threading paternoster knots past dawn. I am the falcon. I fly blind through a progressive sky. Hampton Hawes of Hermosa Beach, his harmonium gently weeps. Thank you. Whoa.